they say that all good things must come to an end. And it is time to say goodbye to the Kent Travale Project. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. Here's a little refresher. A while back, I bought this Kent Truvale from Walmart. I was intrigued by its value proposition. It was a nice looking hardtail 29er with an upgradable frame and a halfway decent spec for a cheap $398. So I bought it. And I tested it. I modified it. And I upgraded the hell out of it. I wasn't the only one to do that. This guy put some money into it. And there were plenty of other YouTubers out there doing the same thing. I had one more phase in this project, and that was to upgrade the wheels. Which I finally did. Sometime last year, I found a set of non-boost wheels from Brand X really cheap. The problem is, the new fork is boost. Now that's a problem. The solution is this. A non-boost to boost conversion kit made by a company appropriately named Problem Solvers. If you aren't familiar with the difference between boost and non-boost, it basically boils down to the width of the wheel hub. Boost hubs are a little wider. The adapter kit widens the hub and adjusts the position of the brake rotor so everything lines up. The new wheel set was a nice improvement. I decided to keep the stock tires and tubes. I liked a combination of low rolling resistance and good traction. They're really underrated tires. The weight of the tubes wasn't holding me back since I had already been in pretty good shape during the race season. Overall, the cost of this setup, including the bike, was about $1,400. And it was a pretty worthy trail hardtail. In my view, as good as any core brand hardtail out there. And way nicer than Seth's bike, if I may be so bold. But I would never call this bike a value. And for that reason, the Travail is getting mothballed. Things have changed dramatically since this bike was built up. For $600 less than what I put into the Truvail project, I was able to snag this bike. The beloved Nukeproof Scout. Better in almost every way. Better frame, better wheels, better tires, better drivetrain. Now perhaps the fork isn't as good as the Manitou Machete I put on the Truvail, but still a solid fork that is tried and proven. And the brakes are definitely inferior to the Magura MT4s on the Truvail. And it's also missing a dropper post. To me, all minor issues. To a new rider or someone on a budget, the Scout is ready for serious action right out of the box. For the tinkerers, such as myself, it's a jumping off point. In case you haven't noticed, I much prefer to set up my bike with the specific parts that I want. And that's what I'll do. Okay, I got a little impatient. We'll dive into the Scout more in another video. So please subscribe if you are enjoying this video. It costs nothing and it makes me happy. So this begs the question, is the Kent Travail a good value? Well, yes and no. Currently, the industry is suffering from a meltdown. There is a glut of inventory out there and my educated guess is that companies need cash badly to keep the lights on. And if you're thinking about doing what I did to the Travail today, don't waste your time or money. There are a lot of great hardtails available with heavy discounts. Hell, there are some insane deals on full suspension bikes right now. Some for less than what I put into the Travail. Cool. See, here's the thing about niche sports like mountain biking. They are always subject to boom and bust cycles. So companies will forecast their sales going forward for the next few years and produce bikes accordingly. As things start to return to normal, prices will probably do the same. Then maybe the Travail will be a value again. Maybe. 
Aside from the rider that wants a sleeper bike, a thousand dollars in upgrades is just overkill. And in my case, I had to hack up this bike to get it to where I wanted. Also, there are new projects in the works. So for all those reasons, we are retiring the Kent Truvail. I'm keeping the frame because regardless of the value, it was a cool project and maybe it'll make a reappearance in the future. In the real world, most people looking to buy a mountain bike like the Truvail are simply looking for a cheap bike that looks cool to ride around the neighborhood and is somewhat capable on dirt. not the type of riders looking to take trips to places like Moab or Sedona. Deep down, that's what I love about the Truvail. It's affordable and accessible to a lot of people. People that might not have Moab or Sedona at the top of their minds, but perhaps it'll inspire the one rider that veers off onto that dirt path, stops and thinks to themselves, I bet a trip to Moab would be cool. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.